Sime, in the previous lesson we explored simplifying equations using a Carnot map. Here we will add one more wrinkle, don't care conditions. This is how we handle situations that can't possibly exist. So we don't care about forcing a circuit to output a specific result for those conditions. The most common application of don't care conditions occurs when representing decimal digits in binary. As we've seen before, four bits are needed to represent the decimal numbers 0 through 9. But with four bits, we could represent decimal 10, 11, 12, and so on up through 15. That means there will be some unused bit combinations. Let's look at this situation. A number pad with buttons for decimal 0 through 9 is used to record data. When the user presses a button, that signal gets encoded into 4 bits. For example, pressing the 7 sends the code 0111 to the processor. Why does it need to be encoded? Because the language of the processor is binary. It wouldn't understand the keystroke otherwise. Next, that 4-bit code is used to determine if a light turns on. If decimal 3, 7, or 9 is pressed, the light turns on. If any other number is pressed, the light stays off. Our task is to identify the simplest possible equation for the light output. As usual, we can make a truth table for the situation. The column labeled DEC is not required, but is helpful in identifying the decimal number associated with each 4-bit code. Another note is that I labeled each of the input variables with the same letter, but a different subscript to indicate its bit position. This is a useful strategy with inputs that represent a coherent number. If I name these, for example, w, x, y, and z, it would still be correct, but it implies that the inputs work independently. Now, for the body of the table, what do you notice is strange or new? These last six rows show an output of X. Those represent the don't care conditions. We don't care about how the light bulb would respond to an input of 10 or 15, because that set of inputs is impossible. This allows flexibility in our design. We could, for example, build a circuit that would turn on the light for 12, and a different circuit that would turn off the light. Both would be fine. We simply don't care about those input codes. But for all the practical possibilities, 0 through 9, we do care. It is important that the light is on for the indicated cases, represented by a 1, in rows 3, 7, and 9. Just as important, the light must be off for all other single-digit cases. So those outputs must be 0. From this truth table, we can create a k-map. Four input variables leads to this 4x4 four four grid and I make sure to use the same names for the variables. Each output on the truth table, whether 0, 1, or x, can be placed in its appropriate square. I happen to start with x's here. Notice how each of these squares shows the binary code for a number bigger than 9, from 10 in the lower right to 15 in the middle. Up next, I filled in the 1's. For instance, this top one is the square for binary 0, 0, 1, 1, or decimal 3. I could have filled in zeros to the remaining squares, but I simply left them blank. Now to make the groups, we need to follow these guidelines. All ones must be grouped, because the light must turn on for those cases. No zeros can be in any groups, because the light must be off for those cases. And the x's are flexible. We group them when they are convenient for us, which here means where they allow for larger groups. So, look at this k-map and identify the two best groups to use. Pause the video while you do so. The first group I notice is this tall, skinny, brown group of four. This covers two of the required ones, and it includes two x's. The next group needs to cover the remaining one. There are several options here that would make a correct circuit. I could choose a group of one. I could choose either of two groups of two. But bigger is better. 
I should choose this group of four. There are some x's left out, but that's okay. X's can either be grouped or ungrouped. They are flexible. An easy way to remember this is that the letter X appears right in the middle of the word flexible. Finally, from those two groups, we can identify two product terms and form the final equation shown here. Here's another more general example. In this case, we see the shorthand canonical SOP notation used to define both G and D. G is the actual output variable. It indicates where the output signal must equal 1. D is short for don't care. It indicates where the don't care conditions are, or where X's appear on the K-map. From the equations, we fill in the indicated min terms. For example, this 15 on the D function tells us we should place an X at binary code 111, or decimal 15. The true values are placed from the G function. For example, this 3 tells us we should place a 1 at binary code 0011, or decimal 3. Always double check to make sure you haven't missed a min term from either function. The groups are a little tricky in this one. Pause the video and see if you can find the best groups to use. The first group has size 8. It is the entire left half of the map. Thank goodness for those X's. Now for the next group, let's find one that will cover this bottom one. There are several options, such as a group of two like this, or a group of four like this. Which one is best? The answer might surprise you. It is this wraparound group of four. That single group covers the remaining ones. Always be aware of the possibility of wraparound groups. From those two groups, we form this simple equation. I'll leave you to verify. As a reminder, we can turn SOP equations easily into AND OR circuits, like you see here. In this example, the NOT gates are implied by the primes on the variables. Note what the circuit accomplishes for us. If we substitute in any binary codes for function G, the output is guaranteed to be 1. For example, in the code for decimal 12, w is 1, x is 1, y is 0, and z is 0. As a result, g equals 1. But for any of the don't care conditions, the output could be either 0 or 1. For example, look at an input that was grouped, such as 0, 0, 0, 0. Here, g equals 1. And now look at an input that was not grouped, such as 1010. 0, 0. In this case, g equals 0. There's flexibility in the outputs for don't care conditions. But we're not done proving the accuracy of the circuit yet. We must also make sure that any of the zeros or blanks actually output a 0. There is no flexibility here. You can quickly check all four of these input codes. For example, 0, 1, 1, 0 has x equal 1, y equal 1, and z equals 0. As you can see, g then equals 0.